Um, now we'll discuss about something called moments in statistics. So there's different types of moments um, in statistics. Really what the word moment means is average. So it's a fancy way in statistics to mean average, okay? So the first moment of distribution is just the simple mean of some data, okay? So essentially for our purpose, first moment of distribution means mean, which means expectation value. They all mean the same thing. So the more important thing is, how do we calculate the mean or the expectation value or the first moment of distribution of a data set that has probabilities associated with it? Now what I mean by probabilities associated with it is this. I'm sure many of you already know how to calculate means, right? If you're given a data set like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you can find the average of x. So these brackets, they just mean average or the mean. So you can find the average by adding up all of the numbers or all of the data sets and then dividing by the total data sets that you have. In this case, you have five total data sets, okay? Um, so the total for this, so the average would be 7.5, I think. I just did it from my head. I'm not sure if it's right, but somewhere around there. So actually, it wouldn't be 7.5. It'd be, let's see, it would be 3. Um, because 1 plus, so 1 plus 10 plus 15, okay, 3. Yeah. Um, but when you have probabilities associated with a data set, sometimes you won't be able to find the mean using this method. Sometimes you'll have probabilities given. So in that case, we find the mean or the expectation value or the first distribution by using this formula. What you do is you take each of your given data sets, each of your given data points, like x1, x2, x3, and so forth, like, like in this one, this would be x1, this would be x2, x3, and so forth. You take those and then you multiply them by the probability associated with each data point, okay? So once you do this, you get something called the average. Um, we'll do some examples and hopefully that'll make more sense. But right now, just see how the formula works. You take each of the individual data points, you multiply them by the probability associated with that data point, you add all of these terms and you get your average, okay? So formally, I say that the average of x is given by the sum the sigma sign means sum of each data point multiplied by the probability associated with that data point. So basically, um, this is a way of shorthanding this long notation. So let's do an example. Let's say you write a test um, that's, that only has three questions. The first is worth one mark, the second is worth two marks, and the third is worth three marks. And you have four options, A, B, C, and D. Now let's say you didn't study for this test at all. It's Let's say it's a pop quiz, and you don't know the answer. So what you do is you decide, okay, well the answer has to be A, B, C, D. So you say, I'm going to guess B on all of them. If you, get, if you guess B on all of them, then what should you statistically expect your mark to be? Um, this is where expectation values come in, and this is where averages come in when you have probabilities associated with some data set, okay? So you have three questions. So I have three data sets, right? The first is worth one mark, the second is worth two marks, the third is worth three marks. Now, if you guess B on all of these questions, then the probability of you getting the correct answer is 1 in 4. So the probability of B being right is 1 in 4 because all four of those could be right, right? So that is the probability associated with B being correct. So your table that you need to set up looks something like this. The first question has a probability of 25% of B being right. Same with the second question and the third question as well. They all have the same probability of B being right. So what should you expect your mark to be? Well, remember, 
you take each of the data points like one, um, two, and then three, and then you multiply it with the respective probability. So here it's 0 0.25 right the probability of getting B as a correct answer is only 0 0.25 or 25 percent similarly you multiply 2 by 0 0.25 and 3 by 0 0.25 now and then you add all of them of course um, so the first term is 0 0.25 the second term is 0 0.50 the third term is 0 0.75 you add all of these to get 1.50 so that means your expected mark is 1.50 out of 6, which is probably a failing grade. Um, so the bottom line of this lesson is even statistics is telling you to study before your exams so that you, so you don't have to guess on them, of course. Um, now we move on to a second one. Um, and I, I show you this example because expectation values on the first moment of distribution helps you even calculate your university GPA and your university grades. So let's say you had you took a science class in university um, and it had four units. The first unit was chemistry, second was biology, third was physics, fourth, fourth was astronomy. So out of a hundred the first unit is worth 20 marks, the second unit is worth 30, the third is worth 20, and the fourth is worth 30. Um, and let's say in chemistry you score an 80%, in biology you score an 83%, in physics you score a 78%, and in astronomy you're really smart and you score a 92%. So remember, we need to be looking for X's and the probabilities associated with those X's. So X's here are, of course, this column. This is X1, X2, X3, and X4. This column is just your serial numbers, right? They don't have anything to do with our math. They're just placeholders to tell you that the first unit is chem and so forth. Okay, so the, so the probability associated with x1 is 0 0.80, with x2 0 0.83, with x3 0 0.78, with x4 is 0 0.92. So in order to find the average mark that you will get or your expected mark in the course, you take the first term, which is 20, and you multiply it with its associated probability. You do that with the second term, with the third term, with the fourth term. And then the last step is you add all of these together. And when you do that, you get, you get 16 for the first. Um, for the second, um, I believe this number is 24.9. For the third, 20%, 78% of 20 turns out to be roughly, um, in my mind, let's say 15.6. And for the last one, it turns out to be 27.6 out of 30. You add all of these numbers together, and what you get is 1, 4, and 8. 84.1% is your final grade. Um, if you're given these marks. So these things, they're not just helpful in physics and chemistry, they're also helpful in real life. Now we move on to something slightly more different. Now I told you the word moment just means the mean or the average. So the second moment of distribution, it's the mean of the square of your data set. The first moment of uh, distribution was just the average of all of your data points, but you don't square them, you leave them as is. The second moment of distribution um, happens to be the square of your data sets. Now you might ask, why do we need to know this? This actually um, corresponds to something called skewness. So basically, which way is your data pointing towards, right? 
anyways the formula for this is same what you do is you add up each of the x's and the probability associated with them but since this is the second moment of distribution you square the x if this was the third moment of distribution you would cube the x if this was the fourth moment of distribution you would um, do x to the exponent 4 and so forth okay so the take-home message is that moments in just statistics they're just a fancy way of saying average of some data the first moment is just the average of the data without any other alterations being done if you have probabilities associated with the data you use this formula if you don't have any probabilities associated with the data then you simply add up all of the data points and you divide them by the total number of data points this is what you're used to seeing the second thing is probably what you've done before if you're talking about the second moment um, then basically you instead of instead of just leaving the data as is you have to square the data and then you multiply it with the probability you don't do anything to the probability but you only square the data okay now um, if you didn't have any probabilities associated with it you would just square the data points and divide by the total and that would give you the mean of the squares now if you want to talk about the s moment meaning anything above 2 then the formula is basically you take the exponent um, uh, so if s was 3 4 5 6 the only thing that would be changing is x would have an exponent that would correspond to s if s was the tenth moment of distribution then xj would be raised to the exponent 10 nothing would happen to the probability um, but then you would just have a bigger calculation to do in terms of x uh, moving on uh, I just want to mention some last thing is that in physics in math or sorry in, in math and in chemistry we will mostly be dealing with the first and the second moment of distribution in fact in statistics you mostly just deal with the second and the first moment of distribution in physics sometimes you'll deal with moments of distribution that are beyond the second moment that might be the third the fourth the fifth moment of distribution but we won't deal with them um, but it's it's important to know how you calculate moments of distribution because it's not really that hard to do so the question is how do you find the first and the second moment of distribution of the following data well I'm going to put a second column here um, because for the second moment of distribution I need x squared so x squared for 1 is just 1 x squared for 2 is 4 and x squared for 3 is 9 so the first moment of distribution um, it is just 1 times 0 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.2 plus 3 times 0 0.6. Um, that turns out to be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.18, I think. Um, and that turns out to be, oopsies. 0.78 the second moment of distribution would be 1 times 0 0.2 plus 4 times 0 0.2 plus 9 times 0 0.6 so it's 0 0.2 plus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.54 um, that just turns out to be 1.54 okay so all it's telling me is that the data is skewed towards the higher number, which is 3. Okay, so the probabilities are also telling you that the data is kind of skewed towards 3. Okay, so most of your data lies somewhere towards the higher region, and then less of your data lies towards the lower lower region um, with this i hope that made sense next time we'll pick up on something that's a little bit more important than the second moment of distribution mm -hmm. um, and that's called the variance so next time we'll pick up from the variance which is actually this term right um, variance is this term the second moment of distribution 
is this term and we will show that these two terms are not the same. So a lot of times people confuse these two, but we'll show that the variance is different than the second moment of distribution. And I think you can see that right away. The second moment of distribution just takes up x squared terms and takes the average of them. But the variance, what it does is it takes the mean and it squares that. So, so there's a little bit of difference between the two.